Okay, let's go ahead and practice our arithmetic skills. And the best part about this problem is we're not going to use a calculator. And anytime you're doing math with or without a calculator, you want to be careful and do things one step at a time. But if you're looking at this problem, you're saying to yourself, boy, I kind of remember how to do this because it's been a long time. Well, that's perfectly normal. The farther, you know, we get away from math, you know, uh, especially arithmetic, you know, you're going to forget stuff. But here's going to be a nice little uh, problem or we're going to look at a nice little problem here that's going to involve some decimals and some fractions. It's going to be a quick rehash. It's not going to, you know, um, cover everything in terms of decimals and fractions. But I think this might be a nice little starter review for those of you who want to kind of get back into math. Now, if you think you can do this problem, put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct solution in just one moment, and then we're going to go through this thing step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I can tell you right now, I love teaching math. It is my true passion. And all of you can be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math, right? Maybe you've uh, failed a couple of math courses. Who cares? The past doesn't equal the future, okay? If you want to learn math, you can, okay? What you need is encouragement and, most importantly, great math instruction. Math instruction you can understand. It's clear and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe you're getting ready uh, for some sort of special exam, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam, things like that, that have math on it, or maybe you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span all these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave uh, links to my uh, math notes in the description because you need something to study from. Well, I mean, you certainly can't learn math if you're trying to learn math by just you know watching you know, videos or watching your teacher. You gotta write stuff down. You need some reference material. So learn how to be a great note taker that will really, really help you out. But in the meantime, you can use my math notes if you want to. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we got 0.2 times or 0.2. This is parentheses. Or we could say 0.2 parentheses 5 minus 8 plus 1 third and parentheses. What is this equal to? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. Okay, so here we go. The answer is negative 8 over 15. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got that right, that's pretty impressive. Certainly impressive enough. Very nice little happy face. An A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars so you can celebrate your success in arithmetic. Okay? Now, if you didn't get this right, listen, don't beat yourself up. You've probably been away from math for a while. And so the whole point of this video is just to kind of quickly review some of this arithmetic skills. Now, if you happen to be in some uh, elementary school or middle school, well, we're going to, you know, uh, talk about things that you're learning right now that are important. But here's the kind of main uh, point that I want to make to those of you that are continue uh, that will continue to learn mathematics. Arithmetic is absolutely critical to your success in algebra and beyond. OK, so don't learn arithmetic. And then once you're done learning it, be like, oh, I don't need to remember this stuff because now I get to use my calculator and every, you know, life's going to be so great. Listen, you still need to know this stuff. All right. So let's go ahead and continue on our journey here uh, by getting going with this problem. All right. So here we have 0.2 and then we have parentheses, uh, 5 minus 8 plus 1 third. So we have to keep the order of operations in mind. Okay, we have to do uh, all this stuff inside parentheses. So once we get this down to one value, then we'll multiply by 0.2. So you have to recall the order of operations, which is this nice little um, uh, mnemonic, little memory aid, but it goes like this. Uh, P stands for parentheses. We got to do everything inside parentheses. Now, when you're doing your work inside parentheses, or if there isn't any parentheses, the next thing you need to look at is E. E stands for exponents or powers. You're going to do things like uh, 2 cubed next, and then you're going to do multiplication and division and addition and subtraction, whatever you see first from left to right. But the order of operations is one of these things that I think a lot of students think they know better than they actually do. They, um, I think on like basic problems, you could do okay, but a lot of students can get in trouble with the order of operations, um, you know, basic skills. So if you're struggling in math, probably you need to like work on 
your understanding of the order, op order of operations, fractions, positive and negative numbers. These are kind of classic areas where students kind of struggle uh, with in mathematics. But listen, if you're struggling with this stuff, just improve, and guess what? Everything will start getting better. Okay, so first things first, we have to work on uh, the value inside these parentheses. So I have subtraction and addition. So we're going to uh, do what we see first from left to right. So we're going we'll to go ahead and tackle this, 5 minus 8. So 5 minus 8 is the same thing as, let's write this over here, 5 minus 8 is the same thing as 5 plus a negative 8, which is negative 3. Okay, so if you're shocked that we're working with positive and negative numbers here, well, you know, this is part of the learning curve. So and this may not be like a, a typical elementary school prom because... Uh, positive and negative numbers are kind of introduced at the middle school. But anyways, hopefully you knew that, but that is the answer. So we're going to start off by doing this part of the problem. 5 minus uh, 8 is negative 3. And we're just going to continue to work this step by step. Okay, so you're going to write one step, and then you're going to uh, write an additional step. Never try to do too many steps at once in math. You all, you'll just confuse yourself and your teacher, and you'll likely get the problem wrong. Okay, so now that we know that 5 minus 8 is negative 3, we have to figure out this part of the problem. So negative 3 plus 1 third, because we're still working inside these parentheses. So we're going to obviously have to add some fractions. But some of you might be saying, well, this is negative 3. Uh, you know, this is not a fraction. Anytime you want to think of a number as a fraction, just put it over 1. Okay, so you can think of negative, negative 3 as negative 3 over 1 plus 1 third. Now, some of you can kind of just see this and be like, oh, negative 3 plus 1 third, you kind of do this in your brain. But yeah, you really don't want to do that. Okay, You'll want to break out your work this way. And so here, anytime we're trying to add or subtract fractions, we need to have the same denominator. We do not have the same denominator. So you need to be thinking about the LCD, the lowest common denominator, which, of course, is 3. Now, um, this is another area that a lot of students uh, struggle with. They think they know the LCD better than they actually do. For example, if I gave you the problem one-third plus two-fifths, almost all of you could say, oh, I know the LCD. It's 15. You would be correct. But if I made these uh, numbers more interesting, like 508 and 36, then, you know, a lot of you would not be happy about that. You'd be like, I'm not watching a video anymore. I'm not doing that prom. You know, listen, you got to know this stuff, especially if you intend to uh, take more advanced math like algebra. But in this case, the lowest common denominator is 3. So we have to rewrite this denominator as a 3. So we're going to have to fix this up. It's a 1 right now. So how do we turn a 1 into a 3? Easy. All we have to do is multiply that 1 by a 3. So 3 times 1, of course, would be 3. But if I multiply the denominator by 3, I have to multiply the numerator by 3, that top number. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results of that. 3 times 1, of course, is 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So this is uh, going to be equal to negative 9 over 3 plus 1 third. Now I have two fractions with the same denominator, so I can add these, no problem. Okay, so negative 9 over 3 plus 1 third. How do I add fractions with the same denominator? I simply just add the respective numerators. So negative 9 plus 1 is going to be negative 8. So this is uh, equal to negative 8 thirds. Okay, so, you know, this is why you have to do, you know, things one step at a time because there's a lot of, you know, steps that we have to take. So let's just kind of review where we're at. So we did 5 minus 8, that was negative 3. Then we just did this part of the problem, negative 3 plus 1 third, and we're down to negative 8 thirds. So finally, we, now we have to figure out what 0.2 times negative 8 third is going to be. Negative 8 thirds is going to be. But we're, here we're working with the decimal, and here is a fraction. So let's go ahead and convert this decimal into a fraction. So 0.2, another way of saying 0.2, is 2 tenths, okay? And this goes to your understanding of place value, right? So if I have like 3.289, this uh, uh, space right here, or this place right here in the decimal, we're talking about uh, values to the right of the decimal point. This is the what uh, place? This is the tenths place. This is the hundredths, this is the thousandths, etc. So if you're down to just this uh, uh, 3.2, or let's just say 0.2, you would say this has two 
tenths, okay? So the way you want to convert a decimal to a fraction is to say it in terms of its place value, so 2 tenths or 2 over 10. So now we just have to figure out what 2 over 10 times negative 8 over 3 is, and how do we multiply fractions? It's super easy. All you do is simple, uh, uh, simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So here you can go 2 times negative 8, which of course is negative 16, 3, or 10 times 3 is 30, but you always, always try to reduce your final answer. So negative uh, 16 over 30, we can reduce down to negative 8 over 15, which of course is the answer, right? 2 can go into 16, 8, 2 goes into 30, 15. Of course, we have these negative signs, but here is the answer. Now, one other way you could do this problem is before you multiply, some of you might have seen, oh, two tenths, I can uh, reduce this fraction before I multiply, and that's a good strategy as well. So simply just reduce two tenths down to one fifth. So now we have one fifth times negative eight over three, and when I multiply the numerators and denominators, you end up with negative eight over 15, same answer, okay? So again, not, uh, you know, there's different paths to get to the right answer. In this particular problem, there's not too many different ways, but when you're multiplying fractions, adding fractions, there are some kind of little variations to things. That's why the more you know, the better, you know, uh, your math toolbox will be. But even a basic arithmetic problem like this does require, you know, a decent amount of skills and attention to detail. That's why you always have to be careful. Now, if you're getting back into math or if you need some help with the kind of elementary or basic mathematics like decimals, fractions, et cetera, let me give you a couple suggestions if you're trying to improve and if you like my instruction. I have a great little mini course. It's called my Math Foundations course. It's a simply a three-chapter course. It covers everything um, in basic mathematics, stuff that we all forgot in elementary school, but it's important. Arithmetic, place value, fractions, percent. That's a great kind of starter course. Um, so I would highly recommend that course if you uh, need help with decimals and fractions, et cetera. But if you're a little bit more advanced than that, you might want to check out my pre-algebra course as well. And I also have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. But if this particular video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.